this week uh, uh, marks one year since the Supreme Court upheld the Affordable Care Act. Uh, it captures the spirit of our founders, uh, uh, the spirit they wrote in the Declaration of Independence, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Affordable Care Act offers just that. I had no idea they were talking about the health care law back then. I thought those other guys in wigs just doing other stuff. Anyway, Nancy fancies the health care law, but as the House Democratic leader gets ready to celebrate, our next guest wants to set the record straight, Dr. Mark Siegel. And taxpayer watchdog Gretchen Hamill say in order to have independence, you need to have choices. And, Doctor, you were telling me coming up here that this has offered anything but independence. You know, I wonder if Nancy Pelosi, in the three years since the law has passed, has actually read it yet. She said she didn't want to have to pass it before we know what's in it. It's anything but independence. Independence, Neil, is exercising, changing your diet, preventing diseases from occurring. Dependence is dependence on insurance, and dependence on everything being covered, all pre-existing conditions, all preventive services, the bells and whistles. That's dependence. Use the insurance when you don't need it. Pay a high premium. Pay every penny you have so you can have insurance. That's dependence. This is rhetoric, and it's really this disingenuous, and I think it's an insult to the American people. All right, I'm going to put you down as a maybe on the health care law. <laughs> um, Gretchen, what, what, what do you think of this, and, and for the, the, the former speaker to go to the extent she did to say that this is exactly what our founding fathers would have, would have wanted? <laughs> I think I think she knows the different founding fathers than we know. I mean, earlier in the week she said it was fabulous. Now she's saying it's a reason to celebrate this Independence Day. But it dependence upon government and an increased role in government in our everyday lives and having a, having a say in what our health situation is, that is not a reason to celebrate. And just the... the promises that they sold this plan on have not panned out and I think it has the American public a little confused. We've seen our premiums go up, our plans are changing, and we're already starting to see doctor shortages. This is not a reason to celebrate at all. You know, doctor, as a doctor, I mean, you've seen it up close better than, than any of us, but I, I, the, the people for whom this was intended, the uninsured, uh, uh, what was that, the survey, two out of three, they're, they're not flipping over it, uh, or inclined that they would be part of it. Uh, furthermore, low-wage Americans, for whom it was also expected to benefit, uh, close to two out of three of them don't want anything to do with it. So, bottom line, we upended an entire health care system that was the envy of the world for something that we are billion shy supporting. Neil, to put it another way, 88% of people were covered before. Now we're trying to get up to 95%, and in order to do that, a lot of employers are going to be dumping the people that they have on the health insurance. They're going to make people part-time so that they don't have to cover them. They're going to go to the state exchanges and find they can't afford the premiums there. The government is going to have to go in and subsidize everyone, and some people won't qualify for that. They'll fit in the, the, in the gap. More and more premiums are going up, as, as you said before. But, but, so, so people won't get access. And then with the doctor shortage, you won't get access to the care you need now under the Affordable Care Act, which is not affordable. Well, obviously, there's a push to sell the good stuff. And I think part of that, Gretchen, has been those pre existing conditions, to the doctor's point. Kids, you can keep in, uh, in the policy yet another reason for them to live with you for the rest of your life. Uh, so, so there's that, and they can say, all right, look at that. And, and, and that's the good. And that's what they're going to be proposing. That's why they're hitting up the NFL the NBA to attract uh, young people to be part of this. Is any of that working? Well, I think we're waiting to see if that's going to work or not. This, they have just now kicked off their big plan to start getting more and more people enrolled in this, and they are targeting young men young in order they need to young make people this. To buy in. <laughs> well, it'll be interesting to see if they can buy in because you young they people, they, they don't get insurance. You they know, don't want to be a part of this program. Neil, young people don't need, just to this point that she's making, young people don't need these kind of policies. They need catastrophic policies. They need yes. something if you happen to run into a tree when you're skiing that will cover you in the emergency room. What do you, do you need the kind of coverage where you can go to a doctor whenever you need it, when you're not even sick? That should be paid out of pocket. That should be with flexible spending accounts. That should be tax deductible. We need incentives for weight loss, incentives for exercise. Well, they say that's in there. You say it's not. It's not emphasized in there at all. It's not a large part of the bill. What is a large part of the bill is young people paying high premiums. All right. Guys, thank you both very, very much. In the meantime,